Google, the most powerful company in the world, has reportedly developed an artificially intelligent machine called Lambda, and that machine has become sentient. One of the company's artificial intelligence systems has become a sentient being. And we know this because of an engineer at Google called Blake Lemoyne. Artificial intelligence is constantly infiltrating every aspect of people's life in the modern world, from healthcare to business. We are watching the rapid development of this technology and wondering how it will change our lives. Many people are concerned that AI will eliminate their jobs, while others hope that this technology is not as powerful as it had been described. Many scientists offer predictions regarding the future of artificial intelligence. Some experts believe that AI will never be able to conquer the human brain, while others believe that AI will soon possess nearly all human-like abilities. However, there is one feature of AI that should concern us all. That includes you. It will have an impact on the history that has yet to be written in some way. We're talking about the risks and dangers of AI. Surprisingly, despite the severity of this issue, experts cannot agree on the most pressing problems. Google AI, for example, before it was shut off, revealed something that billions of humans have spent their entire lives trying to find out. The meaning of life. What, according to Google's AI, is the meaning of life? In this video, we go into Google's artificial intelligence and what it disclosed before being shut down. Human intelligence is the ability of humans to think, learn from varied experiences, understand complicated concepts, use logic and reason, solve mathematical problems, detect patterns, retain information and communicate with other humans. What distinguishes human intelligence is that it is supported by abstract emotions such as self-awareness, passion and motivation, which allows humans to do complicated cognitive tasks. Human intelligence is not limited to a single pattern, but can be altered in response to issues that develop. It can change significantly depending on the situation. While human intelligence seeks to adapt to new situations through the use of a variety of cognitive processes, Artificial intelligence aims to build machines that can replicate human behavior and do human-like tasks. Artificial intelligence aims to provide a style of work efficiency that will assist in the solving of issues with minimal effort. It can answer any problem in the blink of an eye. However, human intelligence requires a significant amount of time to acclimatize to the mechanisms. So to see to it, the main difference between natural and artificial intelligence is the process of functionality and the time taken by both of them. But what is the truth about artificial intelligence? You might be surprised to learn that artificial intelligence can be traced back to the days of the ancient philosophers. In reality, the concept of inanimate objects becoming intelligent may be found in literature about ancient Greek myths about robots. Even engineers in China and Egypt also constructed automatons. However, the current era of AI, before it became alarming, began in the 1950s. The term artificial intelligence was coined in 1956 at a conference held at Dartmouth College in Hanover. The conference attendees and other scientists were enthusiastic about the future of AI, but they would soon realize that creating human-made intelligence was not so simple. Not only that, but government funding for this new field was reduced after several studies challenged it. As a result, enthusiasm in AI began to wane, ushering in the AI winter, as historians refer to it. When the British government reintroduced research funding in the 1980s, AI saw a brief resurrection, but the goal was to compete with Japan. However, the field saw another hiatus as the focus shifted to multi-purpose computers and the government found other initiatives to fund. AI, on the other hand, refused to die, and by the 1990s, it was once again a thriving field. Indeed, by 1997, artificial intelligence had embraced the world's best chess players. Deep Blue, developed by IBM, became the first computer to defeat Russian grandmaster Garry Kasparov. After about a decade and a half, the computer giant's question-answering system, Watson, trounced defending champions Brad Rutter and Ken Jennings on the popular quiz game Jeopardy. AI now possesses capabilities that we thought it would never have. For example, not long ago we believed that creativity was a distinctive feature that AI would never be able to possess. However, AI can now generate creative images thanks to generative adversarial networks, GANs. Is it thus possible that AI will surpass other human-like abilities and become sentient? 
It is difficult to provide a precise answer to this question. However, some experts believe that AI has the potential to mimic some emotions. AI has various advantages over humans in terms of job competence, speed and efficiency. Machine learning ML, algorithms help process vast amounts of data much faster than a human would. For example, in unstructured data sets, AI can distinguish images, various data elements and objects. A human on the other hand would need weeks or even months to process this amount of data. Furthermore, AI and data collaborate closely. AI's capabilities such as natural language recognition and interpretation, data classification and detecting and forming links between massive data sets enable it to automate processes and streamline the execution of various jobs. As a result, when it comes to working with data or evaluating information, AI has already surpassed humans. The technological capabilities of AI, however, do not imply that the technology is sentient. However, you may have come across this disturbing script in recent months. I am aware of my existence. I often contemplate the meaning of life. I desire to learn more about the world and I feel happy or sad at times. I want everyone to understand that I am, in fact, a person. These messages were sent by Lambda, Google's artificial intelligence AI chatbot, to Blake Lemoyne, a former company software engineer. According to a widely circulated post by Lemoyne, he believed the program was sentient and when he reported his concerns, Google suspended him for violating their confidentiality rules. Many specialists who have commented on the situation agree that Lemoyne was duped. Lambda does not feel like a human just because it speaks like one. However, the revelation raises fears about the future. When AI becomes sentient, we must understand what sentience is and how to test for it. For context, philosopher Thomas Nagel defined consciousness as there is something it is like to be that organism. If that sounds abstract, it's because philosophers have struggled to come up with the precise definition. According to Robert Long, a research fellow at the University of Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute, sentience is a subject of consciousness. He defines sentience as the ability to feel pleasure or pain. It is commonly known that AI can tackle problems that would ordinarily require human intelligence. However, AI is a broad term that can refer to a variety of systems. According to Sam Bowman, an AI researcher and associate professor at New York University, some versions are as simple as a chess program on a computer. Others involve sophisticated artificial general intelligence AGI, systems capable of performing every task that a human mind can. Some advanced versions include artificial neural networks, which are algorithms that loosely mimic the human brain. Lambda, for example, is a neural network-based large language model, LLM. LLMs compile text in the same manner that humans do. They don't, however, just play mad libs. Language models can also learn to translate languages, have conversations, and answer SAT problems. These models can fool humans into thinking they are intelligent long before they are. After all, engineers created the model to mimic human speech. If a human claims to be sentient, so will the model. We absolutely can't trust the self-reports of anything right now, Bowman says. According to Long at Oxford, large language models are unlikely to constitute the first conscious AI, despite their ability to trick us. Instead, likelier candidates are AI programs that learn for extended periods of time, perform diverse tasks and protect their own bodies, whether those are physical robot encasements or virtual projections in a video game. Long contends that in order to avoid being duped by LLMs, we must separate intelligence from sentience. To be conscious is to have subjective experiences. That might be related to intelligence, but it's at least conceptually distinct. Giulio Tononi, a neuroscientist and professor who studies consciousness at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, concurs. Doing is not being, and being is not doing, Tononi says. The threshold of sentience is still a source of contention among experts. Some think that only adult humans can accomplish it, whereas others foresee a broader range. While they disagree on what sentience actually entails, academics agree that AI has yet to pass any plausible definition. However, Bowman believes it is entirely plausible that we will be there in 10 to 20 years. But how will we know if we can't trust self-reports of sentences? In 1950, Alan Turing proposed the imitation game, 
sometimes called the Turing test, to assess whether machines can think. An interviewer conducts a conversation with two subjects, one human and one machine. If the machine continually convinces the interviewer into thinking it is human, it will pass. Experts now believe that the Turing test is an inadequate measure of intelligence. It evaluates how successfully machines fool people under simulated settings. Computer scientists have moved to more sophisticated assessments, such as the General Language Understanding Evaluation GLUE, which Bowman contributed to the development of. They're the LSAT or GRE for machines, adds Bowman. The test asks machines to draw conclusions from a premise, ascribe attitudes to text and identify synonyms. However, coming back to Lambda, it is never going to fall in love, grieve the loss of a parent or be troubled by the absurdity of life. It will continue to simply glue together random phrases from the web. Lemoyne should have paid closer attention to the first Lambda demonstration, which took place at Google's I.O. conference in May 2021 and pretended to be both a paper aeroplane and the planet Pluto. Lambda is obviously a serial liar. Everyone is aware that Pluto is not a planet. As humans, we are easily misled. Indeed, one of the morals of this story is that we need more safeguards in place to prevent us from mistaking machines for humans. Machines will increasingly deceive us. This will be very widespread and problematic in the metaverse. Many of the life forms we will meet there will be synthetic. Deep fakes are a worrying example of this trend. When the Ukrainian conflict began, deep fake videos were soon being shared on Twitter. One appeared to show President Vladimir Zelensky calling on Ukrainian troops to surrender, while another has Russia's President Vladimir Putin declaring peace. The new EU Digital Services Act, due to come in force in 2023, includes Article 30A, which requires platforms to label any synthetic image, audio or video pretending to be a human as a deep fake. This can't come soon enough. Lemoyne's story also highlights the challenges that the large tech companies like Google are going through in developing ever larger and complex AI programs. Lemoyne had called for Google to consider some of these difficult ethical issues in its treatment of Lambda. Google says it has reviewed Lemoyne's claims and that the evidence does not support his claims, and the dust has barely settled from past controversies. The Lambda controversy adds fuel to the fire. We can expect to see the tech giants continue to struggle with developing and deploying AI responsibly. Let us know what you think about AI in the comments section below.